All right, welcome back, guys. I'm Jake Ellenbogen, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about Vincent Gray, the new Rams claim off of waivers, their 18th claim under the Sean McVay Les Snead era. Before we get into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, now I'm just going to give you my thoughts, basically, kind of going off the cuff here. What I learned watching film, doing some research, when I took a gander at Vincent Gray, um, you know, the first thought I was like, okay, why is he getting cut? It's early on. What's going on here? And the fans are, are pretty mixed over there in New Orleans about Vincent Gray. I think some people wanted him to stay. I think some people did not like him. There's always an opinion, no matter who it is, whether they are at the top or the bottom of the depth chart. But what I found is that Vincent Gray has a chance to not only make this team, but he has a chance to start. And I know that sounds crazy, um, but it, it really... It's not so much a, I guess, a, uh, you know, something to his game. Uh, it's not so much about him. It's more so who is around. Um, you know, as we know, the, this team really did not get a whole lot better via the draft in the secondary. Uh, the best pick that they made for the secondary, of course, was going out and getting Trey Hodges Tomlinson, but he is limited. He is simply going to be a slot corner nickel corner, whatever you want to call it. That's what he's going to play. So what are they going to do on the boundary? You know, you got six foot three, Robert Rochelle, uh, you have Darion Kendrick, you have Jacoby Durant, and there's all sorts of talk about how they don't want Jacoby Durant to play on the outside. They want to play him inside, but if they want to play him inside, then how are they going to get Trey Hodges Thomas on the field when he's clearly one of the best three corners on the roster? So uh, that leads me to why I believe Vincent Gray could emerge. He's six foot two. He's around the 200 pound mark. This is somebody that can carry his guy up field. Now he ran a four five four at the combine. Uh, he is a second year guy, not a rookie, but he came out last year. And this is somebody to me, the aggressiveness is there in the run game. The desire in the run game, the will to stop the run is something that stands out to me on tape. He doesn't have the best long speed, but it's not bad. Uh, it was very much overrated, I think, coming into the draft out of Michigan. He's a two-year starter at Michigan, and this is somebody that does a nice job of mirroring, um, you know, being physical at the point of attack and, you know, coming off the line of scrimmage and in press coverage, which he played a lot of press at Michigan. They asked him to do that. But what I think is interesting is the Rams are taking a guy who has length, he has some athleticism, he has size, and they're just kind of throwing him in this uh, soft shell zone coverage scheme and seeing, you know, maybe if he ends up working out more, doesn't have to use the speed all the time, doesn't have to go crazy with the press man, uh, just can play more with, you know, with more discipline, which I think he shows on tape. I think he has enough discipline to play in zone. And, uh, you know, he's an athletic guy that I think his mirroring ability is going to help him, uh, you know, in this league. And, you know, he doesn't have that top end speed. He, he's not the strongest corner, but I think what you see in run support is definitely eye opening. And I would say he's one of the best three corners on this roster. I think he's better than Rochelle. Um, although Rochelle has a high ceiling, I think. I think if Rochelle meets that, he could be really good. But as of right now, since I didn't see Rochelle last year, I'm going to say I think Vincent Gray is better than Rochelle. I think he's better than Darion Kendrick. And I would say, you know, Jacoby Durant and probably Trey Hodges Tomlinson, because I'm very high on him, are ahead of him. But that makes him a top three corner on this roster. And I'll be looking into Tamarcus Davis and I'll have my own uh, thoughts on him. And I think he's somebody that could make the roster depending on how many corners they want to keep. But the way this has been going, I mean, it's very, very simple. The Rams don't feel like they need a Jalen Ramsey. They don't feel like they need the best corner in the league to run their defense and to run their defense efficiently. It's not that you can throw anybody out there. It's more so they have a plan here and they don't just claim anybody. You could say 18 claims, but think about that from 2017 to 2023. So that's a six year window. They've only made 18 claims only made 18 waiver claims. So, you know, I think that's, that's definitely fair to point out. And that's, you know, averaging three a year, although I don't think they made a claim in 2020 or 2019. Um, their biggest claim has to be Darius Williams, who ended up being a starting corner for them. They haven't made too many, you know, claims on the corners, but when they do claim corners, it typically works out well. 
I would say. Um, you know, you look at Darius Williams and you look at Tyler Hall. I thought Hall played well in, you know, in uh, you know, certain situations. So how is this going to work out? Well, I think Vincent Gray, for starters, is going to make the team. I think he can start. Now, I think something's telling me that the Rams are very high on Darion Kendrick, and I'm not trying to completely crap on the guy, but I have some reservations about his long speed. I have reservations about the way he looked last year. I, I just don't think he played all that well. Um, but again, it's that zone. It's not asking him to, you know, carry up the field 40, 50 yards against, you know, the top wide receivers. He's playing zone. I still don't think he is a great starting corner. Uh, I definitely don't think he's a great starting corner. Um, but what I think you, you look at is this guy, he's a two-year starter at Michigan. He played in the Big Ten. They would have they, they claimed him for a reason. And so Vincent Gray is gonna have a chance to battle and fight and claw his way on the roster. And I think he's ultimately going to do it. Um, you know, I think this is somebody that's gonna make this roster. I'd be shocked if he didn't. Most of these guys that they claimed, and I have the list right here that I put together, uh Lorel Murchison potential big time uh, player this year in the trenches. You know, he's going to get a huge opportunity with Greg Gaines out with a Sean Robinson out. They claimed him last year. He'll have a role. Baker Mayfield. They want to bring him back, but they have Matthew Safford. So he started games last year. TJ Carter still on the roster. Uh, Jameer Jones was a little weird. They claimed him. He had a blocked kick, I believe, and uh, they let him go. But you know, he's somebody that they liked. Jake Gervas has been on the roster forever. It feels like Ryan Pope, they didn't really use him that much. Tyler Hall, they used more. Matt Orzek was a you know Super Bowl starting long snapper. John Daka, you know, gave him some uh, presence, you know, in the off season, you know, when he was trying to fight his way onto the roster. Larry Rose as well. Brandon and Allen, backup quarterback. Aaron Neary, J.J. Dealman. So, um, you know, and then there were some other guys that I think they just flat out missed on, like picked up but just missed. Like Quinton Jefferson, they picked up off of waivers and then they let him go. And Jefferson's a stud. So, um, you know, Mike Purcell, another one, you know, who I thought played well. So I think um, it's been a little bit of a mixed bag, but I think overall, I think the Rams, they have an idea. They have a plan when they go out and they make a, you know, they make a play for a guy in in free agency or, or you know, waivers rather. Um, when they make that claim, they have an idea of what they want to do with them. And I think they definitely have a plan for Vincent Gray. They wouldn't have gone out and gotten that lengthy six foot two corner if they didn't feel like they didn't need length on the outside is he going to be an all pro corner probably not but you know could this guy potentially start on a weaker secondary i would say yes now does that mean that the secondary is doomed if he starts i would say no it doesn't and you know i think we just have to be more open to the idea when talking about this team that a tamarcus davis a, a tyon davis you know um guys that they added via you know the uh udfas like cameron mccutcheon um, you know, guys like that, you know, I, I think we have to be open to the idea that they have a shot as much as anybody to make the roster because it's wide open. We've never seen a team like this for the Rams where the, it, it, literally anyone can make the roster except for dresser win because he's a quarterback who is number four on the depth chart. He would have to beat out Stetson Bennett, who was drafted in the fourth round and he have to beat out. Uh, Brett Rippon. I don't see that happening. So the point stands. Okay. I, I think it, also, I forgot to mention Jordan Jones. Can't forget about him. So the point stands. Vincent Gray could very well make this roster and he could very well have a role. So is he somebody to keep an eye on? Yes. His number's 36 in case you guys didn't know. I found that out. So I figured I would throw that information along, but he's number 36. Keep an eye on Vincent Gray of the Los Angeles Rams, formerly of the New Orleans Saints. Um, one thing I noticed is that he actually gave, you know, Chris Olave some competition in camp last year. He turned some heads and while he didn't end up being clearly what they wanted him to be, he's got enough there where it makes you go, okay. And you think about it and this is a good team, um, you know, as, as far as the organization's concerned, and I think they're better than people think, but the organization doesn't normally make stupid decisions like that. So if they feel like they see something in him, then yeah, they're going to go out and claim him. They probably liked him when he came out of the draft last year. And so I think it's very, 
it's a good move. You know, the more I watched Vincent Gray, the more I was like, okay, I could see this guy being a, you know, Darius Williams where maybe not as good, but, uh, you know, being able to start someday and, and getting the most bang for your buck out of this waiver claim. So that's going to do it for me. Hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I'm out. Until next time. Later, folks.